So how does student use compare to the general population? We've obviously looked at some pretty high percentages there. Well, students are at about 92% using it. General population is coming in at about 66%. So we can see student use is quite a bit higher. It's also interesting to note that the general population usage has a lot more uh, a variety, has a wide variety in what it's using it for. And it's very focused mainly on productivity. Okay, student use, yeah, a little more varied there. Another statistic you might find interesting, in 2025, AI will see the largest single-year adoption increase with an expected 64.4 million new users. So this is just new in 2025. I mean, once you think by now we're all through the door, everyone who's going to use it is using it. No, 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 no. And you know, every day as you learn more about it, maybe even in these episodes, some of you have become among the 64.4 million as you've learned how this tool can be a help to you. But the growing number of users is staggering. And interestingly enough, The United States leads the way with nearly one-third of all new AI users in 2025. So there are some other really big countries you would have thought that they would have weighed in there, but no, we are right at the top of this. But there is growth outside of education as well. So we've kind of just focused on education because that's where we live and and breathe, and that's, that's our life there. But there are things going on outside of education as well. Let's look at some of those. First of all, 78% of organizations use some form of AI for automation or efficiency, 78%. So this could be for meetings, for analysis, all kinds of different possibilities there, 78% of organizations. 89% of small businesses are using AI to automate routine tasks and boost productivity. That's a significant number, 89%. And again, I looked at a number of different studies and a a lot of different feedback, and I'm really trying to err on on the very conservative side of this, and yet still these numbers are really high. See what you think about this one. 90% of hospitals employ AI for diagnosis and monitoring. (laughs) I have asked this of many educators. What do you think of that? And it's kind of, so maybe there's some benefit in that you get it back quicker. Um, Maybe it's more thorough. I'm not sure. But again, there's still kind of that iffiness of, do I really want to entrust my health uh, to AI? But nonetheless, at this point, around 90% of hospitals employ AI for diagnosis and monitoring. So as we look at what it can do and how it's being used and where we should be cautious, again, it all comes back to that focus. Brought to you by BJU Press.